same account or with a five dollar a month subscription here's the ad right here and i'm starting I'm a self-hating jew if i am loyal to that tradition of judaism which has produced such figures as karl marx baruch spinoza jesus all those jewish heretics somehow all those guys are freaks and bibi netanyahu right? they're self-hating they're self-hating brother <laughs> i believe that I believe that Jews need to take over that entire land so Jesus come back and fight Megadoo. Megiddo! Fight Satan so that all the Jews can burn in hell. That's what I believe in. I'm an evangelical Christian. I'm an evangelical Christian. I need to go get sucked up into the heavens, brother. Represents my true soul. And if I don't like Bibi Netanyahu very much, I'm a self-hating Jew. I can't express how offensive I find that. Those people don't speak for me, and they don't speak for majority of Jews worldwide. And the fact that they are taking our safety, our culture, our traditions, and using it as a weapon to fight against someone who wants to redistribute a little money so there aren't homeless people on the street, it's a deep, profound insult to the humanistic spirit which is at the core of Judaism. It is itself anti-Semitic. This is why I always say that Judaism and Jews have been at the fucking forefront of radical movements, emancipation, activism, historically as a consequence of their, their historic oppression. So it is additionally disgusting that right-wing militant fascist fucks like Bibi Netanyahu have completely taken ownership of how uh, Jews are represented internationally. It is so fucking offensive and it is so disgusting. I say this as a Turkish dude, of course, so everybody fucking does not Three listen to me bogies. and say, oh, you just shut up, you're Muslim, you fucking hate the Jews, and, the, and you move on. So here, hear a, a Jewish person talk about it. I come from a left-wing Zionist tradition, actually. My mom was Hashem Hatzayir, who were socialist Zionists. One of the things which is terrifying is how the right wing has essentially captured the Jewish identity more and more. You hear people saying, well, you know, when people make anti capitalist statements, they're being subtly anti-Semitic because, as we all know, Jewish people tend more more likely to be capitalists. It's like um, Karl Marx, <laughs> the opposite of that, Rosa Luxemburg, Leon Trotsky, Emma Goldman. There is a long tradition of Jewish radicalism. To some degree, what we now think of as the left is a product of Jewish thought and the Jewish tradition just as much as, say, Christianity comes out of that tradition. When brown shirts hit the street, when the Nazis show up and start taking people away, the guys who are out there defending the Jewish neighborhood will tend to be the radical left. Basically, will tend to be exactly the people that were being targeted. So it's crazy to go after them yep. and to ignore the right. You know, they went through anything that Corbyn had ever said and tried to figure, is there anything we can construct as if it were somehow anti-Semitic? Obviously, if you did that, you could prove anybody was anti-Semitic. You could prove yep. that Margaret Thatcher or Ronald Reagan were communists. If you just like took quotes in isolation and said, well, he played a wreath. I mean, Ronald Reagan did lay a wreath on the cemetery of SS troops at Bitburg. The bad take by Graber. Uh, okay, a bad take by Graber. Ronald Reagan is closer to Nazis than than a uh, fucking uh, uh, <laughs> Corbin is to to uh, anti-Semitism. Very same force that was. So I would say the same thing about Thatcher too. Running Auschwitz, he knew he was doing it, and no one's ever accused him of being an anti-Semite as a result. Around the same time as everybody was going on and on and on about how Corbin is supposedly an anti-Semite because he wasn't rigorous enough in disciplining trolls on Twitter, you have Boris Johnson and Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon is doing a tour of the radical right. He's going to give a speech in Commons today that's going to throw down. He just went back to the Daily Telegraph as a columnist. I've been talking to him all weekend about this speech. And the very next day, or maybe it was two days, Johnson comes out with that famous letterbox thing about women in burkas. It's obvious that Bannon gave him the idea. So here he is intentionally sort of inflaming his homophobic, doing this kind of little dog whistle game on the advice of an overt racist. Everybody's like, la di da di da da nothing to see here. I mean, Boris Johnson wrote a book which is so obviously anti-Semitic. The only thing you can think is that people are just pretending not to see it. He actually describes 
Jewish oligarchs controlling the media and fiddling with the news to change it to their advantage. I mean, it's a classic anti-Semitic Jewish conspiracy theory overtly expressed, you know, in his own name, in something he wrote. Now, find me anybody in the Labor Party who's done something like that. Yet, if you look at the number of mentions of Tory- The funniest part is that, like, anti-Semitism is a gigantic problem in the UK because it's Turf Island and they have uh, so many fucked opinions. And when you look at, when you look at like anti-Semitism in the Labour Party in comparison to anti-Semitism in the, uh, the Tories or anti-Semitism across the whole of uh, the entirety of the UK, it's nowhere near. Like it is marginal in comparison to the rest of these uh areas where anti-semitism is a is a gigantic problem I mean, yet all you fucking heard was how anti-semitic uh the the fucking labor party was or conservative anti-semitism versus labor anti-semitism in the media at its height in 2018 there were over 6,000 articles mentioning labor anti-semitism and the number of articles mentioning tory or conservative anti-semitism was zero it is probably significant that not only did the conservatives oppose the condemnation of Viktor Orban, who's a classic right-wing anti-Semite, <laughs> yeah. Johnson put in his platform specifically to criminalize travelers. And I don't think there's any precedent for a political platform in the UK of a political party. That's a that's an ethnic group. Like for those of you who don't know, I'm going to use a a aggressive term here. Uh, so trigger warning. Travelers is the uh, correct terminology, politically correct terminology for gypsy, and that is, or Romani, and that is a, a, a huge, uh, this is a, like a huge never-ending uh, problem in, in Europe. Uh, something that we don't uh, think about here, but reported, it's, this is the most in-context thing I can say. Shut the fuck up. Um, Roma. Uh, Romani or or the G word. <laughs> he loves saying that word. Yes, I love saying it. Um, Irish travelers are a different group than the Romani. Well, traveler is an all encompassing umbrella term for it. Um, but that's what they use for uh, Romani as well, right? And also, aren't Irish travelers? Also, literally, uh, uh, some of them are, uh, they have Romani background, aren't they? Isn't that, isn't that the case? I thought the Irish travelers themselves also had, um, had, uh, yeah, they are, again, this is, I think, a bad word too, pikeys, pikers. If you watch Snatch, my favorite uh, movie, Brad Pitt is apparently doing a really good, uh, a really, really good uh, accent, like a really good pikey accent. I, fun fact, I couldn't have my last name on Facebook for the longest time because they thought I was, uh, because I th they thought I was trying to use a slur. To specifically mention an ethnic group. You're the white school teacher that says the N-word from and the reading with passion. Group, yes. That second to the Jews was the most persecuted by the Nazis anti-semitism has to be fought like any other form of racism you can't single it out and say the rules are different from some people than for others all of these forms of structural bias of prejudice i don't like to use the word hatred because i think the word hatred is overused a lot of the people who are the most dangerous are not the ones who are inspired by strong emotions like hatred they are cynical calculating people who are trying to turn people against each other create a kind of political poison to take people whose interests are in common whose experiences are much more similar to each other than they are to the people in control of our society and to make them hate each other those are the people where we really have to worry about. Anti-Semitism is a problem. It exists in our society, and we shouldn't pretend that it doesn't. I think people who say, what are you talking about? There are no anti-Semites in the Labour Party. You know, that's absurd. Of course there are. On the other hand, the question is, is it worse in the Labour Party than it is anywhere else? And 
At least until the uh, scandal broke, it was very so clear that the like, Labour Party my voters were less Gypsies likely to and be anti-Semitic. On the other hand, if you're trying to create anti-Semitism, if you're trying to create a feeling that there is a Jewish conspiracy intervening in politics, I can't think of a better way of doing it than what actually happened, which is a group of people, most of whom were not Jewish, going to the media and screaming their heads off and trying... And it worked. It worked because it caused hysteria amongst British Jews where they literally thought Corbyn was the fucking second coming of Hitler. Like, there was a not insignificant, I think of a majority of British Jews that said that they would leave the UK if Corbyn was uh, elected. To create That's how fucking powerful propaganda is, folks. You understand me? That's how fucking powerful this shit is. Never forget that. And that's also uh, a, a direct line that you can point to here in America with QAnon and all these other psychotic fucking, uh, all these other psychotic things. They literally lost us an election. People like my parents are actually believe he's racist, crazy, sad. Now, that's why this is where I draw the line. Like for me, the, the, the basement for what I think makes I you a, a, uh, like a legitimate and, and serious person is defending people like Corbyn and defending people like Bernie Sanders, obviously critically offering a criticism when it's a necessity. But, but like, if you fall into the fucking, uh, uh, these, these jackals who fucking made up this, uh, bullshit conspiracy about a dude who fought Nothing his entire fucking month. life Just thanks for the against who dedicated his entire life to fighting anti-Semitism, fighting fucking apartheid regimes, fighting racism, a dude who has been arrested for it in the past, like th to, to, to believe that propaganda, uh, Fred. hook, line, and sinker. Sorry, like you're you're not a serious person. You are not a serious person. You are an unserious person. Okay. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't just that. It wasn't just uh they the, him being an anti semite. The anti semitism campaign that was pretty much in unison, like everywhere. Okay, that wasn't the only reason why he failed but that was what dominated the conversation just like bernie bros dominated the conversation in the fucking primaries when that's all people talk about when they talk about you then you can't have a cohesive or consistent position on anything else that's the only thing you have to answer every time there's a fucking microphone being put in your face it's like oh well how do you deal with the anti-semitism in your party why are you the second coming of hitler it's it's absolutely preposterous uh, mr corbin please respond to how anti-semitic you are like if that's the only thing that the fucking people ask you all the time then you can't even have a goddamn fucking take on anything else that that's all people know you for you're constantly on the defensive you can never be on the offensive so that's one issue but the biggest issue was that he was stuck between a rock and a hard place where he had to take a position on brexit but there was Half the fucking Labour Party that wanted to uh, do Brexit and follow with Brexit and half the Labour Party that did not want to follow through with Brexit and wanted to uh, remain. So he did not take a position on it. He did not do what a good leader is supposed to do and, uh, and, and take ownership of whatever your position is, calculate the outcomes. And unfortunately, he said, oh, well, we're going to renegotiate it. We're going to renegotiate it. It's a, it's a mess. And that's not what people wanted. They wanted to get Brexit done. Get Brexit done. So, meanwhile, the 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 uh, mainstream media in the UK is constantly pumping out these psychotic theories that he is a uh, that that Corbyn is an anti semite, and uh, simultaneously turning around and and uh, not allowing uh, Corbyn to even have a good consistent position on Brexit. It's a wrap after that. Syria, trying to terrify the Jewish population, trying to create an atmosphere of fear of potential purges within a political party, because then people are going to say, well, maybe there is some kind of conspiracy going on. I mean, it wasn't, as it turned out, largely a Jewish conspiracy. Most of the people doing it weren't Jewish. And most of the people who were Jewish were hardly representative of the Jewish community at large. But it's important to remember that the people who were the most loud in accusing Corbyn of anti-Semitism had been protesting everything else they could possibly think of about Corbyn, ranging from his unelectability to his taste in clothes. You know, they've been trying to make a scandal out of something for years on end. And 
hadn't shown the slightest concern, many of them, for Jewish issues until they figured out, oh, this is something we can make it stick. And one reason, of course, that it seems to stick is because he'd been a long-term campaigner for Palestinian rights. In America, there was an attempt even before the fervor about Corbyn during the governor's race in New York to accuse the other side of anti-Semitism. And the New York Times stepped in. In this case, they said, no, don't go there. This is a really bad precedent. We do not want to weaponize anti-Semitism by using it for cheap political shots. But then after what happened in the UK, there's been a second round and people are saying, well, maybe if it worked so Yeah, it's like the Washington Examiner, Bernie Sanders is an anti-Semitism problem. So they try to do the Bernie bro shit with him. Luckily, because uh, we are too fucking one dimensional, we were like, no, he's a Jew. Shut up. Like that's, that's literally what saved them. It's can like Jews be anti-Semitic? Of course they can. The right. Okay. If of course they can. And are what, like Bibi Netanyahu, for example. The okay. Is true. And but most have because we're disease, so fucking so one dimensional that we were like, yeah, okay, shut up. Yeah. Okay. Dude, Jewish guy. Uh, who is really is running for president is a fucking anti-Semite. That's not going to stick with fucking Americans. Like, they're not going to understand that. They don't even admit that Stephen Miller is a fucking uh, anti-Semite or a, a psychotic fascist. It's a, oh, he's Jewish. He can't be. So, not going to happen, okay? Uh, good luck. Good luck. You can't even get the actual fucking fascist Jews uh, uh, outed as anti-Semites or as racist. So, uh, good luck with the fucking uh, Bernie one. It didn't work. The first, I will, I am remind, I need to remind you of this. The first pack that was established in the primaries that started attacking Bernie Sanders was the Democratic Majority for Israel pack. They were the first motherfuckers. They were the first motherfuckers that attacked Bernie. A pack that uh, Blinken and also Joe Biden has met with, by the way, just, you know, have, have uh, talked to. So do with that information what you will with centrist Democrats and uh, militant uh, far right uh, Zionists and how uh, how they fucking uh, constantly find themselves uh, constantly find themselves uh, in agreement. And also the weaponization of uh, anti-Semitism. Well, against Corbyn, we can try it against Sanders. Of course, you know, Sanders is Jewish, so it's going to be a little more difficult, right? But they gave it a shot, and they're definitely using it against some of his allies. I think that it's important to distinguish between three things that people often confuse. One is anti-Semitism, another is anti-Zionism, and the third thing is opposition to the Israeli government. You can say that the current right-wing government of Israel is horrific, and still not be opposed to the existence of Israel, let alone not hate Jews. And what people are trying to do now is not just conflate anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, they're trying to inflate anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism, and opposition to a particular political party and its agenda, which is just crazy. The project of Zionism meant something very different from someone who was a follower of Jabotinsky, who might- Guys, they- they literally, establishment Democrats love hitting the anti-Semite button, okay? It's their favorite fucking, it's one of the, it's one of the many defenses that they have against uh, leftists who are trying to fucking primary them. They did this to Cori Bush. Like, people don't fucking remember, but Cori Bush was called an anti-Semite. Okay? She was called an anti-Semite when she was running in St. Louis, of all fucking places. Like, it's not, it, BDS was not a notable issue in the Bush clay race. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> it's not. What do you mean, weaponization of anti-Semitism? Does that mean using it in an argument at all or just a certain set of people using it? No, using anti-Semitism against people who are not anti-Semites is a gross weaponization of social justice causes. They've done this before. They do it all the fucking time inappropriately to members of the left. I mean, guys, like, 
Oh, the label of anti-Semitism. Sorry, weaponization of the label anti-Semitism. It's fucking insane. It's fucking insane. Pretty rich coming from you, Hassan. I know a journalist writing an article on you exposing your anti-Semitism, but for now, he'll remain nameless. Dude, don't make fucking jokes like this, okay? Like, I know you're trying to make, like, a nameless king joke, but, it, like, it, it's not funny. Like, because this shit like that does happen. Like, I, I don't want to... It, it is one way to just, like, very clearly just like, yeah, you're dunked on. You're owned. I mean, guys, like, Israeli officials fucking reached out to Seth Rogen's mom, okay? When Seth Rogen was like, yeah, everything I learned about, uh, you know, the Israeli occupation was... was uh, based around falsehoods, and I think that Palestinians do deserve human rights. And everyone was like, "Oh, fuck you, Seth Rogen! How dare you? How fucking All dare you, Seth Rogen?" They literally called his mom to get him to change screen. his mind. You've made this pandemic so much more bearable than it otherwise would be. Hassle. The reason why we started this, by the way, is because I wanted to talk about uh, Jake Tapper. We haven't even gotten to that, but we'll get to that in a second. I, I wanted to give you all the all the fucking necessary information for you to recognize that this is unfortunately historically applied now are there actual fucking fascists who also like to act like their criticisms of israel purely rely on human rights abuses but in fact they are absolutely anti-semitic yes of course of course that happens there are racist there are horrifically racist people there are people who uh, who hate Jews that 100% try to fucking hide their anti-Semitism. They try to cloak their anti-Semitism in regular criticisms of Israel. Like, no, they, they don't give a fuck. They, they, don't, they don't care that Israel is like killing Muslims. They fucking hate Muslims too. How do you deal with concern trolls weaponizing social justice as a response to being called out on their bullshit? I don't know how you do it. I, if, I, if I could find a good way, if I could find a, a decent way to push back against it, then I would do it myself. It's very difficult. It, it, depending on how much, uh, depending on how much power the media has, like, you're not going to be able to do that. You really can't. Especially if there's a massive pile on. Tomorrow, if every fucking outlet, if every mainstream media outlet decided to, 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 to tarnish my reputation and say I'm a, a racist, uh, an anti-Semite, they could. There's plenty of fucking clips that you can clip out of context and make it seem like, I mean, my fans do it for fun. There's plenty of shit that you can find to be like, Hassan is, is dog shit. He's a horrible person. And literally showcase that I have the opposite opinions of what I have been fighting for my entire professional career. All the causes that I've been fighting for. And that's the reality. That's something that you can. And that's, the something, that, uh, that's something that the media does uh, regularly. I mean, look, the New York Times called Jenk a white supremacist. You're a horrible person, Hugo Chavez. Yeah. New York Times called Jenk. A, a fucking brown dude whose name they can't even fucking say. And a, a, a person who is uh, in agreement with David Duke. Because at the end of an interview, uh, in the end of a debate that he had with David Duke, after fucking yelling at him for an hour, he turned around and said, yeah, sure, David. Racism is not a problem. Sarcastically. It's fucked up. This is a true, this is truly a problem. Why did they do that? Because he was looking to primary uh, the, the uh, person that was uh, running in the jungle primary uh, against, uh, or running, that was hand selected by the California Democrats as the establishment candidate in uh, CA25. They said he was a supporter of bestiality. It was a, Instance where the New York Times fucking uh, shook hands with uh, the, the horrific smear merchants like Mark Dice. Can you imagine? The New York Times and Mark Dice came together to shit on a, a progressive candidate. It's fucking, it's disgusting. And it does happen. So.
it's really sad. It's really sad what they've done, not to just like, uh, you know, political pundits or whatever, but it's sad that they, uh, it's sad that there's so many people out there who claim to be free speech defenders, ardent defenders of free speech, like, you know, uh, uh, Ben Shapiro, fucking lie, he's not. Or Barry Weiss, who fucking has made a career out of, like, talking about how uh, free speech is under threat. Um, or Alan Dershowitz, for example, who have also made it their pet project to fucking blacklist uh, Palestinian uh, activists. And those who advocate for the rights of Palestinians. They do it regularly. It's really fucked up. Norm Finkelstein is a great example of this, a person who's been blacklisted from academia. Noam Chomsky is another. Fascist, but happened to be Jewish. And someone who was a Hashim Hatzair, who was a socialist Marxist who wanted to go to Israel to create a communal society in cooperation with the Arabs who live there. I'm actually myself a little uncomfortable when people use, you know, I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm anti-Zionist, but all Zionists are evil. No, they weren't all evil. I mean, the project has ended up in an absolutely horrific right-wing government. I that agree with that, by the way. It had to turn out that way. I'm an anarchist. I'm opposed to states as a solution to anything. But I think that everyone has a right to live where they want to live. If Jewish people identify with this as their homeland, they have a right to live there, but so does anybody else who identifies as a homeland. I mean, you don't have to... Sorry, Noam Chomsky was not blacklisted from academia. Of course, he's very well celebrated in academia. He's blacklisted from the media as a whole. Um, there's a reason why Noam Chomsky, since like, I think it was 19... Was it... When was it? Was it 65? I forget. Like, the last big media appearance that he did was in the manufacturing consent era. And since then, he, has, he hasn't really had... Jank advocates for bestiality. There's a video of him on that. You know he doesn't, you fucking moron. Jesus Christ. Um, it's like just saying Jank advocates for bestiality is like saying uh, both Destiny and Vosh are uh, pedophiles that uh advocate for child pornography like it, it's not it's not real it's a total fucking fabrication you are absolutely clipping them out of fucking context like you're you're being ridiculous like advocates you shut the fuck up dude it's morons like you that is the reason why you can't fucking it's morons like you that is the reason why like these sorts of conversations can never take place okay because you will 100% 100% without a doubt, like take everything out of context and do everything you can to tarnish someone's reputation. Have these violent exclusionary solutions to problems. It is conceivable for people to work out their problems reasonably and get along. In fact, it requires I'm not going to read it out the chat, gravy to robber. Keep people apart to keep people from comparing notes and noticing that actually they have a lot more in common than they have which divides them. You have forces right now in the Middle East trying as hard as they can to stop people from realizing how much they have in common. In much the same way that racism has been deployed to keep working class people from uniting against their employers. At this time, nationalists' ideologies are almost invariably deployed to keep people forgetting how much they actually have in common with their neighbors. The last election in the UK showed anything. It's So, um, I did all of this just to get to my favorite media figure, Jake Tapper. Now, uh, Jake Tapper is a notorious Islamophobe. I'm sorry, if you don't recognize that, then you're a fucking fool. He literally will go to depths that, like, right-wing fascists uh, would, would shudder at the thought of uh, going to when it comes to criticizing uh, Muslim women, specifically Muslim Congress women. Um, and uh, he did that. He was like, why is it about Secretary of State nominee Blinken that makes the congresswoman think he should try to suppress her views about the Prime Minister of Israel. Hmm. Jake Tapper is a pussy. If this uh, limits uh, any sort of media opportunity that I might have in the future on CNN, then so be it. He's a pussy. I'm sorry. He is an absolute fucking pussy. He can't even fucking say it. He can't even be like, Rashida Tlaib is an anti-Semite. And that's why she's saying this. Okay? 
Jake Tapper, you're supposed to be a fucking, you're supposed to be a commentator. You're supposed to be a journalist. How fucking disrespectful of you to, to try to find the least charitable position that you can apply to this person in this circumstance. When it's very clear that she's fucking talking about, when, it, when it's very clear that she's fucking talking about the position of the previous uh, cabinet member at, the, at this time, or, or the position of, of Mike Pompeo. What an ugly thing to do. What a fucking ugly thing to do. Disgusting. And he does this. He, he loves this shit. Anyway, we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the Dave Chappelle stuff in a second. Um, oh, anyway. It, it, is, it is very... Yeah, he, he got fucking bullied on Twitter because this is the one area where there is like more democracy or a more democratized uh, place where like any random person can like own you and enough people can get to you. That's why all these people are so sensitive about Twitter and being bullied or whatever. So they got him to delete his take. Uh, where is it? Where's the new one? Does anyone have it right here? I want to, I want to point it. I want to, I want to uh, go back to what this coward what this fucking coward posted. I'm relatively new here and love your content and views. Do you have a background in politics? I'm a political, I study political science, but I, I don't have a background. To no, no, no. The, the Jake Tapper uh, uh, shit is so funny. I, 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 I we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Like, Hold on, where is it? Oh, here it is. So he deleted it. Blinken and Biden are both on the record opposing efforts to punish sanction BDS, though they also oppose BDS. So I'm not sure what it is about Blinken that would prompt this tweet. Rewrote this tweet. So basically what he did was get, he got called out for his uh, fucking terrible take that uh, was trying to say in the most cowardly, sniveling way that, uh, you know, Rashida Tlaib is, a, is, a, is an anti-Semite. So he turned around and he said it in this way, which he knows at this point. He knew at this point that, like, Rashida Tlaib was very clearly talking about the predecessor uh, and, and the position itself. Mike Pompeo announcing just days ago that he would work to criminalize BDS. So it's bullshit. He just wanted to be, he didn't even backpedal. Like he just wanted to reword it so that he could uh, continue being a, a really Islamophobic. Okay. What Jake Tapper is saying this as Pompeo is currently trying to ban BDS. Yeah. Yeah. Noam Chomsky did have some bad takes in the 1670s, such as questioning Cambodian refugees that were fleeing uh, Khmer Rouge. Dude, number one, number one anti-Chomsky take um, is, is trying to make him seem like he's a fucking fan of Pol Pot or something, okay? It's, it's the most psychotic thing I've ever fucking heard in my entire life. When I first heard it, I was like, wait, what? Really? That's crazy. Did Noam Chomsky actually do this? No, he didn't. He said there is reason to question the legitimacy of the numbers that are coming out. And very quickly fucking rescinded that take. It's not like he's a fucking fan of Pol Pot. Like, what a, what a psycho. This week has been the longest in my life. I miss XQC so much. Is it really that fucking boring, dude?